Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Maggie Bergen here today, and she is a brand specialist. She um, she strategically helps people so they could evolve in their in their business career through branding. So today she's going to tell us some tricks of the trade and show you how you can get started to build your business the right way. So before we start, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. Today we have the Happy Wellness Expo in Livingston, New Jersey, and they will be coming here and they have all the information in the description box. They will have over 100 exhibitors and they have doctors, coaches, and people from all over different technologies. And they'll even have some massage therapists there so you can get a nice background. So all that information will be in the description box. So check it out. So Maggie, I am so excited to have you on the show. I am really excited because, you know, so many people want to build their business and there's so many conflicting information out there about brand and strategies, which you know a lot about. And I want you to explain to people the difference, you know, so we were talking earlier and we were talking about verbally uh, being, you know, uh, being a brand and um, strategics. And then well, there's also other ways of doing it through colors and websites and other stuff, but verbalizing it is really important. So why don't you tell everybody a little about who you are, what you do, and then we'll get into all this great information because you have a real, a lot to share. Stacey, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, and I'm, <laughs> um, I don't know if it's because I'm a librarian's daughter, but like um, sharing information is um, mo almost more fun to me than like actually building yes. <laughs> my strategies. So uh, I love I love this, and thank you again for the opportunity. So oh, I'm welcome. a brand strategist, and, and what does that mean? Everyone that comes to me, is, every client I've ever had, is really good at what they do. They have happy clients. They have ideas that are spreading but they're not good yet at talking about what they do. And yeah. a brand strategy is the bridge between those two. Right. People, people think, I think a lot, and you'll, you'll know this as a business owner yourself. People yeah. think that when you're a business owner, you're supposed to be good at everything. Right. And you kind of, I think part of the business building process is learning what you're good at and what you're not good at. Yes. And I want people to know that if you're good at something, that's enough yeah. And you can hire people like me to help you figure out how to talk about the thing you do. Because right. unfortunately, it's not an overlapping Venn diagram, those two skill sets. Yes. It's it's just not. It's well, maybe for people like you who are like marketing businesses, I think that would be the one exception. So I help people who are really good at what they do, not good at talking about what they do, bridge the gap. And the way that we do that is we use everything that science knows about how human attention works. Right. That's all a brand strategy is, is we take everything that science has come to know yeah. about how human attention works. Right. And we apply it to your product, your service, or your idea. Right. To keep people from scrolling away, to yeah. cause them to stop mm -hmm. by using how brains operate um, to, so people can look at your offer and say, Oh my goodness. That's for me. I need that. I want that instead of scrolling away. Right. I think it's so important that, you know, verbalization is so, so important. And a lot of times people think just by having a pretty website or just the right colors or having, you know, catchy, um, you know, uh, info commercials and this and that, you know, it's not about just how pretty something looks. It's really about getting the message across. And I think sometimes people, you know, don't really understand how to get the message across. Maybe you could explain to people some of the things that they need to do, you know, you know, to get started, to really be able to verbalize and get their messages across the right way. We've all been on social media long enough to know that there are brands that land for you, whose content you look forward to seeing, whose ads you don't mind watching, and there are brands who very much miss the mark. Yeah. So every giant company you've ever heard of, I guarantee has a brand strategy. Right. And every company you scroll past probably does not. Right. And the reason, the reason why that's true is because a brand strategy helps you understand 
exactly how to turn the heads of the people that you're looking to be in connection with. Right. And some of the ways that some of the things that people can do to get started, uh, I recommend figuring out what your brand personality is. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe your brand personality, Stacey? So my br brand personality is uh, vibrant, happy, energetic, and I give people a positive feel, positive energy so for, to improve their overall health and well-being. And I have to say that comes through very clearly. Is that something that you've like ever articulated before? I have, yes. Yeah. And was articulating that helpful for you? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Okay. So that's the first, what's one of the first things I recommend is to define a brand personality. Um, the next thing, another thing I recommend people do to get started. And I mean, if you want, you can just Google how, you know, how, create my brand personality. And I guarantee there's some options that are available for, you know, either $0 or $27. You can download a, a PDF. You are certainly welcome to come to me. I'm happy to be of service. Um, another uh, thing to do is to, to come to understand your ideal client. Yes. And I use ideal clients is like, you know, some people use avatar, some people use, you know, target customer. I feel like ideal client is like the most respectful way to talk about the people that you want to be in connection with. So yeah. that's why I use that. I hope it doesn't sound too technical. <laughs> um, but uh, again, business owners are so excited about what they know and how they can help that yeah. they oftentimes spend too much time initially, especially talking about themselves. Right. And People's favorite thing is to be seen and heard and welcomed to a table. You know, people want, I'm sitting at a table right now. People want to feel like you're pulling out a chair for them or getting them a glass of water. And the way that you do that is not to talk about yourself. It's to invite them in by speaking to their worldview. Right. Understanding your ideal client's worldview really is the price of admission to get and hold their attention. Right. And honestly, a lot of, I work with mostly with women mm -hmm. um, business owners, because one of my missions is to, I think it's time to level the playing field. You know, I think women and underrepresented communities, I want them to know everything that giant corporations already know right. about getting and holding human attention. But I think women in particular are so relieved to know this, that the way to connect with people is to talk about them instead of talking about themselves, because even business owners who are women, a lot of them aren't as comfortable talking about themselves as uh, uh, somebody else who grew up with the different gender right. identity might be. So that's the second thing I recommend. And then we get to the end, I'll share the tool that I've built to help people do that. But those are the first two things I recommend people do. I think that's great. You know, I, I think it's really, you know, one of the most important um, points you just made, and I think it's it, so many people make that mistake, even in real life, is that they want to be seen, they want to be heard. But the best way to be seen, the best way to be heard is to let others into your world and let them share how important they are. Because sometimes, you know, we don't mean to do it, but we're so excited about what we're doing and what we've become and, you know, all these great little things. And then we're yapping and yapping and yapping about our Cells and everybody else is like, mm, you know, and it actually pulls the person away. And it's the same thing with marketing. You know, it's like you, you have, it's not all about, about what the product is. It's like, how can this product help you? And, you know, hitting those pain points and really making those people understand how it could really open up their world to a better well-being. I think all people really want, I think, especially right now, is for brands to say, I see you. Yes. Just to take a moment to say, I see you. Yeah. It's, it's so important, um, both from a scientific point of view in terms yeah. of capturing attention, but I think it's also really important from an ethical point of view. Right. Um, to say, to just say for a moment, I see you. And bec because you can't say, I see you unless you have taken the time to understand the people that you want to draw toward toward you yeah. because you won't know what to say. So it, it really indicates, I think, a, a kindness that is a best practice in terms of branding, um, but also just a, a really good way to be in the world. Right, right.
it's not often that, you know, marketing science overlaps with, <laughs> with, um, with, you know, being a good brand in the world. But I think those, that's one of those moments. And you mentioned pain points. I make my clients like do a Girl Scout pledge that once we learn what's happening in the world of our ideal clients, I make them promise not to abuse them with that information, but right. to say, I see you and here's how I can help. So, you know, I don't work with lose 10 pounds in 10 days kinds of products or services because that's an abuse of yeah. what's going on with someone. They're feeling insecure in their body. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I, learning about what's going on in your ideal client is really important. Oh, I definitely think so. I, you know, it's funny too, is like now, I don't know if it's just this new generation. I don't know what it is, but how many times have you seen, you know, commercials or you, and then you, after the end of the commercial, like, I have no clue what they were trying to say or sell, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember even when the Super Bowl used to come, we'd all, you know, you didn't have to even like football. You just wanted to see the commercials because they were so funny. And a lot of times I'll watch these commercials and I, I don't get the same feeling that I used to get. It's like, it's like a lot of times I'm confused. What did they just try? To, what was the message? What were they trying to sell just now? You know, it's like, I, I don't get it, you know? Yeah. One of the most important things uh, right now is very easy for very small businesses and very hard for large businesses. I think the point that you just made is that one of the most important things right now that I recommend to brands is to act human. Yeah. Because human brains naturally want to connect mm -hmm. and acting human as your brand, it helps to form those relationships better. So I think you watching that commercial, it's, it's like an, it's like an idea that's kind of floating out there. It's not, it's not, they didn't, those brands chose not to act human, to act right. like, you know, having a deeply human brand makes it way easier for people to love your brand because they understand it. Yeah. So it's really and then, good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Please no, no, go no. ahead. I don't no, know. No, finish. No, I, I am finished. <laughs> uh, but I was just, I was, you know, I was just going to comment on how you were saying it. It's so important to be human. You know, and I feel like a lot of times I, I don't know where that like where brands are going, but they, they're off the human level, you know, and it gets more on the technical level or it gets more on a, a different type. I don't even know what, but it's like you lose the person. Yeah, I there's um I don't work with very, very large companies. So there's kind of two ways into people's brains. The first way is uh, through repetition mm -hmm. and bold visuals that deeply connect. Yeah. So nobody I work with can afford repetition. You know, this is, I am not working with McDonald's. You know, I'm not right. working with Target. That's, I don't want to work with McDonald's or Target. I'm working, <laughs> with small, I'm working with smaller companies trying to level the playing field. But these smaller companies... Um, don't have the opportunity to use repetition because it's it's just too expensive. Yeah. The other way into people's minds. And so they remember you, your brand and want to connect with your brand and are more interested in your brand is by being very human in a very bold way. Right. And I don't, bold to me doesn't mean loud. It doesn't mean tacky. It does. It definitely doesn't mean acting like a, you know what? Yeah. Bold. When I say bold, what I mean is, is saying the thing that's scary to say, but mm -hmm. is true. Right. So, you know, bold, boldness connects and it means talking about the most human of experiences that you can. It means being exactly yourself without fear or hesitation. Um, so I encourage companies to be bold when they're developing their messaging so that marketers can then take that bold brand and be as creative as they want to be with it. Right. Nobody buys anything because they liked how a quarterly report sounded. <laughs> nobody, nobody spent thousands and thousands of dollars, like you were saying, watching a commercial that they didn't understand. You know, everything needs to be understand. Everything needs to be written as if a seven-year-old is going to write it. Yes, exactly. Um, and when you have millions and millions of dollars in your marketing budget, you know, you can stray away from those without a lot of impact. But for small companies, if you are not being very human in a very bold way, you are, it's like running your business without your superpower. 
You know, you're, 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 you don't have your lasso of truth. You don't have your Thor hammer. And, yeah. and I want everyone to have all the tools available to them. Yeah. Excellent. When, when someone wants to, you know, cause you're saying verbalization is so important. Like where does a small company begin? Like how do they begin to really, you know, understand how to verbalize their product or service the right way? That's a, that's a great question. So all a brand strategy is, is six questions at and answered well. So they should begin answering, asking those questions and answering them. So like I said, the brand personality, you're going to define what that is. Right. Um, you're going to figure out what your brand values are and where those values show up. You can say your value, value the environment, but if you don't actually do anything that values the environment, then you're setting your brand up for a big problem. So don't say anything that's not true in your brand strategy. Right. Next is you figure out what human needs your work addresses. This is sometimes called your brand promise or your brand benefits in the yeah. technical jargon. And then you figure out what the impact is of those needs being addressed. Right. Uh, so you talk to, I'm guessing, since I've done a little bit of, of a dive um, on your brand, you, um, your, the human needs you address for people is information and empowerment around people living their best lives. What's the impact of people living their best lives? Um, it's, it's indescribable. It's like being at home in their body, in their life. It's like knowing that you're on the right path. You're swimming to the mothership. It's peace of mind when people yeah. have that. They're not wondering, what do I do about this health problem? What do I do about this, this potential choice that I have to make? Right. Um, uh, you then the ideal client um, uh, work uh, differentiated advantages um, is another is the fifth question you have to answer why you I am not the only brand strategist in Chicago uh, there's 22 brand strategy firms so I need to be able to answer the question why me yeah and then the last and the sometimes the most fun for me brand strategy pillar is brand positioning mm -hmm. and brand positioning is everything you figured out the five things before and then you figure out what your brand positioning is and what is brand positioning it is the flag you plant in the ground that says right here this is where we play this is why we choose to play here and we're not we're not interested in you over there we're not interested in being over there within our crowded industry this is where stacy plays and here's why right so all of those, you can, you can answer those quite literally. I just told you what a brand strategy is. You can replay the last three minutes, ask and answer those questions. And that's how people begin to talk about what they do in a, in a way that connects. Right. Um, or, you know, you can download a PDF or you can hire me um, and, or somebody, somebody else. But um, if people want to get started on their ideal client uh, it, activity, um, they can go to my website and click the ideal client resource at the top of the page. And it tells you everything you need to know about um, how to welcome people to your table, turn their heads, make them look around for cameras in their house. You're saying things that like speak to them so deeply. Right. Now, is this something that should be on your website or do you go, is this on social media? Because social media has become a powerful tool, but then you hear controversy. They're saying social media isn't really what it used to be and that there's different ways and, you know, they're going more towards the videos and, and reels and YouTube. Like what's the best way to get your message out and verbalize it so you get large audiences and the right audience coming into you? We were talking before we started a little bit about uh, what I believe the answer to that question, which is you have to figure out where your people are and go be with them. Uh, right. So one of my clients is not on social media at all. And she is one of the, my clients who's done the best in, uh, in her business. Right. She has a newsletter and she does speaking engagements. I have another client who only does social media and does extremely well. It really, I, you know, branding is your strategy. And then people need to talk to people like you or other marketing. Um, you know, like you said, you have like degrees in marketing. I don't. So I create the framework with people. Then we hand that off to a marketer who finds where those people are and yeah. develops specific messages. But you, I think you just have to go, I don't know where everybody's people are and it's different for everyone, which right. is not a fun answer, right? Cause it means you have to do your own work, but that's, that's the truth. 
And I find that also when I, when I have different people come on the show, one person doesn't even use her website. She, you know, she hasn't updated it in years. She just uses Facebook. She does ph phenomenal. You know, I yeah. have another person who has, you know, works off the website. So it's like, really, it's, it's what works for that person, that audience, that industry, yeah. I think. And, but absolutely, I, I think absolutely. Like for, I, I need a website, right? I don't think if someone's going to spend money on their business, I bet, I think I better have a website. Yeah. Um, but for, like, like you said, for somebody else that's selling, um, you know, our consultation and they're very clear about what that consultation is and what the outcomes are, they should, they're probably fine on Facebook or, or, or Instagram and not having a website. So it really, it really does depend. And it's always evolving. The nice thing about having a brand strategy is it's multi-channel. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, once you have your brand strategy, it doesn't matter where you are because you're communicating to people in the same way right. uh, with, with like a little flavor of the channel. So if my brand strategy is X and I'm on TikTok, yes, I'm going to reflect like the kind of vibe of TikTok, but I'm not going to say anything different on TikTok than I am on a different platform because yeah. I'm the same brand wherever I go. So right. the nice thing about having a brand strategy, one of the other, one of the nice things is you don't have to worry about where you are. Um, because you have that direction in your back pocket, no matter where you need to be. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That sounded good. That sounded really good. I liked it. <laughs> and it's true. I mean, it might be, I don't know if you've heard the phrase, like if when the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But feel free to use it. Um, but I, I really, I, I people bring me marketing problems and I'm like, that's not a marketing problem. That's a brand strategy problem. Right. Right. You don't know how to talk to your people. You, you doesn't matter what your marketing is. If you're always going to feel all over the place and like you're unclear because you are. Yeah. I think I, I don't, a lot of people just don't know how to go about it. They're kind of lost. You know, they, they have a great product or a great service, but they have no clue how to get yeah. it out there to the right people. Yeah. And without a brand strategy, you know, people won't be able to understand your value. And if you don't have a clear brand brand, you know, people are not going to understand your value and it's not that expensive to build a brand strategy and you'll be, you'll more than earn it back the investment. Guaranteed. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Another big mistake I see is that people, you know, don't know who their audience is and they find that a lot. And, and that really, you know, hurts a business because people don't realize sometimes they're doing what they love, but they're not really paying attention to who's listening to them. And they're going off on, on the right field when they really should be going mm -hmm. on left field. And do you see that a lot in your, in your? Uh, not, no, I don't. I see people, people come to me when they have happy clients and they're ready. Okay. They're, they know they've kind of like done the beta testing for their my dog. Do you have a dog at all? I have two Shih Tzu, so I okay. know what you're feeling. <laughs> yeah, so I and I would like the record to reflect that I took Django for a long ass walk before this. <laughs> um, it's just he's an insistent clown. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you want to see Django, my um, the, the the forty pound clown I live with. Um, you can visit me on Instagram. Be understood branding. Uh, mm -hmm. He does make a regular appearance and uh, has many more fans than I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, he looks like if you had like a shrink ray gun and you shot it at a boxer. We don't know what he is because he's a rescue, but he is we know he is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. aren't you? Yes, yes, he is ridiculous. Yes. And now he's going to start boofing at me and telling me that um, he lives a very difficult life. Don't believe him. Don't believe him. It's not true. I'm sorry. I got so distracted. What was the question? <laughs> we were talking about Brandon and we, we started talking about audiences and then we were talking about it's really not the audience when they come to you. It's about uh, the, the brand strategy and it's about it's completely different. They already know who their audience is. So when you get to the point where they want to come to you, they know their audience. Now is they know, time. yeah, you don't have to, you have to have had who needs a brand strategy, I think is the question. And the answer is if you have, if you have a product or service or idea and you've found a couple people who are like that, I need that. And you're looking to communicate what you do to more people. That's when you need a brand strategy. Yeah. Um, so because you, I need to, we need to talk to ideal clients. And if you don't have a couple of those, then we can't do that. So you could, I, you need to have sold, at least sold 
to have an idea, to have a concept and to have tested it, that yes, this is, this is something that people like and enjoy and uh, get, that you get thank yous, you get, you know, great testimonials from. Right, right. Oh, wow. Now that, that the ideal client can change or expand it's um the thing okay something that people do that i need them to stop doing is n- figuring out their niche i don't yeah. know if like you've had it's not the niche it is the problem you solve for people and how so if you if you're like i need to niche down i i help coaches i need to figure out what category of coach i help no we don't we're not worried let's not worry about niching down Let's figure out what the problem is that you solve and how you solve it for people and what the impact of that being solved is. Right. Then anybody that that speaks to is going to be like, please help me. Yeah. Because that's another thing that you hear so many people talk about. Some people say you need to really niche down to like one specific thing. I am blank, blank that wants to blank, blank. And then you have some people that are like, you know, I have a broad niche, you know, and sometimes it's hard because some, you know, people have expertise in different fields. So it is, yeah. you know, to have a niche, you know, it's really hard because you can be an expertise in, in a couple of different areas, you know, over the, your time of your life, you know, you've accomplished different strengths in your life. But like you said, I like that. It's, you know, it's really what you're, you're focused on is the, people that are coming to you that really, you know, that, that, that really see the impact in you, that you've actually helped a couple of people and you can really realize you resonate that. Wow. I help these people. They, you know, they're a lot more like them. Now I got to verbalize it. Now I got to get it across to people. And how do I do that? You know, and that's where you come in. Yeah. Mel Robbins is not worried about her niche. You know, Oprah is not worried about her niche. <laughs> they're yeah. not worried about niching down They're What they're great at is being a strong brand who, you know, will help you with something. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Now, if people really wanted to contact you and get started, what would be some of the things that they would do? Like, do they find you on, go right to your website or can they find you on Instagram or like, what's the best places to contact you? So my people are um, on Instagram a lot. Most of my people are on Instagram. So be understood branding, come follow me there. I really try to be useful via humor. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you won't, I, I will not yell at you. <laughs> I will not, uh, I will not um, talk about myself. I'll talk about you and what, what my recommendations are. And then um, I come to, so that's the first thing. And second is I send out twice monthly, not gross, actually useful newsletters. So come to my website and I'll give you the URL in a second. And then the little pop-up will come up and you're, I would, I would love to be in communication with you anybody that I could be of service to via my emails. So my, my URL is my first and last name.com or my business address or my business name.com. So Maggie Bergen.com, M A G G I E B E R G I N.com um, or be understood branding.com. So either one, just remember be understood branding, um, be under like my whole mission is I want you to be understood. And a lot of people that you scroll past are not being clear about that. Yeah. A lot of times you you go, you go past even on Instagram and they're just, there's a whole bunch of different things and you really don't know exactly the message they're trying to get across, you know, if the, you know, and I'm talking about businesses, not personal accounts, you know, and, and so I think it, it it's very important to have some type of, of, uh, like you said, verbalization that's understood, you know, and, uh, and even like, what do you, when you, um, when you're verbalizing, is there any, is there, it doesn't, you have to combine really the, the colors and the, and this and the, and the other kind of together, like everything should be all really all combined. It's like, it's like a part, like a, like a cocktail, you know, you have to have all of them together to work. That's a beautiful metaphor. And one I use myself, I call brand strategy a recipe and everything should be pulling in the same direction towards that delicious dish in the end. Mm -hmm. Ideally, once you've completed the verbal part of your brand strategy, which is what I build with people, you would then hire or hand that identity over to a designer. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. who knows how the human brain works when it comes to visuals. I don't know how the human brain works when it comes to visuals. I know how the human brain works when it comes to attention. Yeah. So that person is going to look at your brand strategy and pick colors and fonts and, uh, and design elements that reinforce everything yeah. that you figured out in the verbal portion of your brand strategy. Yeah. Cause I think, I think it's so important that you have to have, everything has to kind of blend together. You know, it's like, you know, cause I see a lot of times I see people missing some pieces, you know, and it, and it makes a big difference, you know, when you're missing a few pieces, even though it might be just like a little tweak here and there, it, once you, you tweak it the right way and everything kind of blends, it, it's a big difference. It really is a big difference. It is. Yeah. People understand a brand when it's simple to understand. And if the visual elements aren't aligned with that simplicity, you're right. It creates a cognitive dissonance in people's experiences, which keeps them scrolling on to whatever's next. And what about the retention? Because our retention in our society has gone all the way down. So when you have to verbalize who you are, like when you tell people, like maybe let's say they want to do a reel and they want to just talk really quickly about who they are and what they do and blah, 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 blah. Like what's the retention? Like when people are talk, some people go on forever. And then you got those people who are a couple of seconds. And then you got those people who take a little bit of time, but not much. What's your 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 own intake on on what, you know, how long any type of video or verbalization should be? Even in, in would, paragraph form too, because like sometimes you see people, they write a whole story. Like when I get whole stories, I click off. I can't, it's like too much to handle. It's like, you know, so what's your input about that? I, I'm more concerned with whether they're being human or acting human and being bold in their messaging okay. than the time of the length of the gotcha. content. Yeah. Okay. The length of the content is always, you know, the preferences of the algorithm will change. The, the algorithm will change. The platform will change. There will be a new TikTok in two or three years. What will that algorithm want? Are you being human? Are you acting human? Are you welcoming people to your table? Are you talking about them, not you? Yeah. And are you being very, very bold? Right. Do those things first and worry about the length later is what I would, what I would say. I like that. Yeah. You know, I think it's a great thing. You just keep in your head, just be human, be human, be bold, get your message across and it all kind of will flow together. It seems like. And I don't say those things because that's what I prefer to see in the algorithm. I say those things because that's what scientists re- researching human attention right. have determined is the best way to get and keep human attention. Right, right. And that's so very true. I think I, I agree with that because I see that myself. I see that with people, you know, when you see you, it, it, putting those things together, it really works and it works really well. It really does. Um, I, there are some brands for whom aspiration could work as well. Um, you know, think of like Kardashians or other kind of aspirational brands. Um, and if you're an aspirational brand, you don't need to be human. You, you don't need to be bold because yeah. you're working on aspiration. Um, but I don't work with a lot of companies that are aspirational. I work with companies that are doing really important things on the ground, usually through a service uh, or a product that helps people. I don't know. Every time I hear a Kardashian, I just think of a champagne glass on a, on an ass, and, and that's like that's all that comes to my head. Well, there you go. There's there's some some results of their brand strategy, right yeah. there. <laughs> now you have you have your you, you work with clients one on one, and then you have your newsletter. Are there any other services that you provide? Yes, I w- once I get on the newsletter, um, they'll I offer um, special. Four times a year, I offer special opportunities to work with me um, uh, more on like a piecemeal or a la carte basis around brand strategy. Yep. So once they get on the email list, then then they'll be able to learn about those. Oh, that's excellent. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Now, if you had to emphasize like a couple takeaways, things that you want people to really remember, everything that you mentioned today on today's podcast, what are some of the important factors like that you would really like to emphasize to our listeners? Oh my goodness. What a great question to end with. Okay. Be human. Right. We talked about that. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, don't be 
flat or boring because you won't be remembered. Be right. as true to yourself as you can, true to your brand as you can. Yeah. Um, uh, understand your idea. Don't talk about yourself. Talk about your ideal client. Always right. welcome them to the table. And be fearless because that's what connects. Yeah. I like that. That's awesome. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Maggie. This has been amazing. I love it. I love it. It was a, it was a pleasure to be with you. Oh, same here. Thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Okay. Have a great day. You do the same, Stacey.